Welcome, everybody, to our Sunday call. If you don't know me, my name is Kelly Kaladni, and I channel the angel Raphael. And as many of you know, we have been working with key codes slash light codes now for about a year. And with that, a lot of magic has happened and a lot of really exciting things. And sometimes I feel like we don't get to really delve into the magic. And part of with working with the light codes is to support all of you in expanding your light body, turning on the light in your body as we're moving through these uh, momentous changes. And so I wanted to share some of the stories about the light codes and about um, our dear sweet Debishri, who is just amazing. So Debishri is the artist of the, all of the artwork. And we have this really beautiful connection and relationship in, in alignment with our spiritual work that has evolved over the last couple of years. And I wanted to bring Debishri on and the two of us kind of go through some of the magic and share with you how it all came together and how it worked works. For those of you who are familiar with Matthias, he um, is a spiritual teacher who does a lot of work on Gaia TV, and he travels all over the world. And he was on a podcast with Robert Grant, I think last week or the week before, and he got to mention um, his interaction with Debushri in the Arctic. And I just wanted to connect you guys with that. Maybe we can listen to it for a minute and show how it's all weaving together and that the work we're doing is a culmination of so many people all over the planet doing really powerful work and it all weaves together and connects. And I was talking with Debushri in the last week or so, and we were really... Um, thinking how wonderful it would be to bring all these amazing people together, the scientists, the people who work with the water, with Veda Austin, um, quantum physicists like Nassim, people that work with architecture, and all of these incredible, um, powerful spiritual teachers who are tapping in and bring them into a collaborative way so we can share what's happening and what we're all doing and collaborate more. So I think the beginning of that is at least tapping in and talking to Debushree. So I'm wondering if, um, Debushree, if you come on, if there's a way, um, I guess it'll just bounce back and forth as we talk, or let me see if I pin you, if that would help. Okay. So anyway, Debushree, hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. <laughs> So um, happy to, for you to be here. So Debushri lives in Mumbai. She's an architect and an artist and a mother and an incredible spiritual being uh, that I admire very, very much. And um, we are DMing each other in the middle of the night, or the middle of the night for me, the middle of the night for her. One of us is waking each other up with spiritual uh energies and things that are coming in and sharing them. And so I wanted to share how kind of the story started and let me share my screen. I have a few things. And then I want to talk about the Debushri has done some extensive traveling and in her travels, she has brought the cards and the light codes around the world and encrypted them with the energy that's then embedded in them that when you receive and work with them is there for you. So let's see. Hmm. Ah, la la. Wow. Hold on. I'm going to make this work. I promise. Hmm. Huh. I don't know that it's showing so well. Okay. See, can you guys see that? It's just the, um, the first image of it got cut off, but it is the ladybug image. <laughs> So it all starts with the ladybugs. I'm going to really quickly share about the ladybugs and then Debushri can tell us about the art, which isn't showing up because of the way the screen is so much, but I do have the card, which I can show you. So ladybugs, um, gosh, where does one even begin with ladybugs? It, my brother-in-law, which is was an incredibly powerful um, being, just really amazing and stayed present after he died for a very long time. He's still present, but not as much. Uh, got a little ladybug tattoo on his butt. <laughs> and um, 
he was a corporate guy and you know wearing his butter button down oxford shirt and pretty much in like the, ins- the he was the president of a big insurance company harford insurance in new york so he wasn't like too much at that time wasn't like a tattoo kind of guy and we're like so why do you have this ladybug tattoo and he's like it's gonna all make sense someday i just do we're like okay russ whatever and then he got another tattoo and he put it on his wrist that said 2008 we're like, why do you have a 2008 tattoo on your wrist? He's like, that's the end. And we're like, the end of what? Like the end of the world, the end of what? And he says, I don't know. It's just the end. I just, I put 2008 on my wrist and he wouldn't want to talk about it. And we're like, okay. So then in the summer, like August, 2008, he gets unexpectedly incredibly ill. He passes away on October 23rd. Um, 2008 <laughs> which was crazy we're like okay and later back we went in and found in his journals that he had been talking to the spirit realm and it was time for him to go on the other side and he had this big mission work to do to bring more light to the planet and he had to leave in 2008 and he knew that but he didn't want to share that with everyone because he thought it might freak people out of course and he had a he was married to my sister and had a daughter and so he sort of kept that to himself but energetically <clears throat> We had to go to the next realm and when he passed we came to home and the entire house was covered like an infestation with ladybugs as we thought it had mold all over it it was crazy we're like there are thousands of ladybugs and then they covered my sister's ceiling which had it was like a dome in her living room she had a very large living room that was had a dome ceiling and whether it was january february march april may all year long it was just covered in ladybugs since he passed and so they were in the church for his funeral they were everywhere covered everywhere where they would go they would show up so then he, he died he was 64 years old on october 23rd And he came in as Merlin. He came in as this white chief hawk energy. He came in as so many beings. We talked to him, played with him, and he brought so much magic to our life, including inviting us to travel all over the world, carrying this egg with us and inserting it in different places uh, for it to receive energy for some reason unknown to us. Then my next sister, my sister, his wife, um got also very sick in 2020 unexpectedly she died in late october her funeral was october 23rd and when she died we came home from the hospital the entire house covered in ladybugs so they communicate to us through ladybugs and then i was teaching a course after mary ellen passed i think it was called um surfing the tsunami it was about metatron's cube and as i was teaching the course debbie Shree was on the course i'm not sure if it was the first one you were in And she started to draw um, some of the transmissions. And this is what came out. So is there something you can, can you guys see it okay? It's probably not our best image. Do you want to share with us about the art debauchery? Yeah, so I think I was uh, part of the first workshop with you. Yeah. And uh, I kept getting all these drawings. I kept seeing them with every transmission through the workshop. And I think that's pretty much been the process all through. And um, and then I, uh, as shy as I am, I <laughs> was very strongly instructed to send <laughs> me this particular drawing in an email. And, and I think I had no idea what that was connected to, to be very honest, at the time. And, um, and when I heard back from you, That was pretty incredible. Yeah. So then I opened the email and there's the ladybug. And I know that Mary Ellen was communicating on some level with Debashree. And then there's an infinity sign. And she had on her wrist an infinity tattoo right here on her wrist after Russ passed to to connect them together um, infinitely. Um, And then in here also, what else is in the drawing? Um, so, so you also have the ladybug with two hearts <laughs> and I don't know, I thought initially I thought it was maybe you and, you know, your connection to your sister, but then you came back to me and you said that it was something that she was inflicted with at the time of her passing and yeah. it was pretty, um, she died of a hole in her heart at, at, when she passed. 
So, I, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I just think it's amazing, right? It's incredible. Um, and so our journey began where Demistry just started drawing the transmissions that were coming in. Um, and these are two of the, I guess, I don't know if it shows for you, if you guys can see this or if um, the people are on top of the drawing. Or, or, but we've got the Earth Star and the Starseed Origin, and that's how we began the light codes, where we went down into the core of the Earth uh, and uh, connected deeply and then up into the stars, into the heavens to create a sphere and a container for the light codes themselves and the light to come in. And so Debeshri started to make these incredible drawings for each of the codes. And um, we were talking today about this container, this spaciousness of the heavens and the inner earth and the opening and how it's it's allowing um as we go back and forth from one code to the next for for the oh i love that there's 144 people on the call that's so perfect <laughs> i just had to say that um and what was it you were saying to me today about that about the two, the energies as above and so below as we began with the process no, I think it was just this uh, this inquiry about uh, you know the idea that there are light codes, and and so light becomes a significant um, a quantity you know within within the, within the codes, and the idea that we're engaging with energies that uh, go from the earth grid, which is why I, I think the cards have traveled so far and they've kind of plugged into this this grid which connects us to the Schumann residence. And, and uh, then there is also the aspect of the spirals and the, the golden ratios. And then you have, um, you have the, um, the frequency of the human cells. And so you come into the container of the human being. And so you, you're connecting then, you know, uh, systematically and along the infinity from the earth to the, the living temple, the human body, like we did with Merlin. And then you connect to the, the energy of the star. And the energy of the star is essentially the energy in every um, cell of the human body. Because the core of the DNA actually radiates just as much energy. And so that is the light that you know we're trying to activate and the idea that all these different frequencies then get mapped one on top of the other, and and then it kind of unlocks, uh, you know, the entire geometry opening out, and and that's probably the container. Exactly. And yeah, and then you move from the speed of light, uh, the the visible reality from zero to one eighty six thousand miles per second. To then beyond that, so the beyond that is the uh, the scalar, the quantum, the infinite, and so essentially the light codes really seem to be on uh, a spectrum, and they're encompassing and embodying each each piece, and they're moving and they're moving through and connecting to each piece as we go along. And that's why I think it started out as key codes because it's unlocking and turning on something as the as more and more light is coming into the DNA, into the cells of the body, into the earth and coming from the stars. And to me, it feels sometimes like the codes are lifting, like they're they're coming out of the earth and then they're raining down from the stars and then they're coming into us and it's all interweaving together. I wanted to, for some reason, my computer is doing this thing hold on or it's not letting me share i'm gonna i mean it's not letting me change the oh here we go this is the merlin uh art that debbie made with merlin so amazing um with the spiral and the hypogeum and merlin and i i don't know if the you guys can kind of see the ladybugs in there do you want to share about this? Let me see if I go to the next one. You might be able to see it better because now we have the tuning fork. So I think this drawing really has 
all the elements in it now that I look at it it strikes me right now because <laughs> really <laughs> the you know the the central pillar that shows all these intersecting curves mm -hmm. so effectively when you take um, two electromagnetic fields and they just about touch they create the the toric field right so this whole thing is like a frequency like a cascade right and then you have merlin's you know instruments of magic and the tuning forks uh with which he's you know uh embedding all these frequencies uh you know with with the magic and you have the 23 which is of course we've spoken about the 23 that's also pretty complex should i get into all that or it's too much <laughs> sure we share about the 23 in the dna if you want or whatever you'd like to yeah so because we have 23 pairs of criminals i mean i've i've always heard about 23 uh from kelly right? <laughs> and so i was like yeah but why 23 and you know i you, you kept telling us yeah 23 is the year 23 is the year <laughs> <laughs> And now it really did prove to be quite the year. Um, so, so 23 has a very special uh, significance in the sense that it's also uh, a map for the human DNA. Uh, it also reflects in the geophysics of our planet and the angle at which it tilts. It's essentially also the cross section of the human DNA because it, it creates a pentahexa formation so when you when you take a strand of dna and then you cut the double helix you're going to see something like a pentagram and a hexagram overlap and interlocked and so that is the 23 because two plus three is five and two into three is six and so it's encoded in everything that lives in 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 that sense so you you have the pentahexa going through not just the human DNA, but then it also gets into the crystalline kingdom and so on and so forth. So it's it's really very magical. So I, I see how Merlin's um, <laughs> working so, with that. And then you have the spirals and yeah. the ladybugs. And uh, the spirals also connect back to Malta because you have this incredible story with Malta. And so that's embedded in here as well. Um, yeah. yeah. Malta is a little island for those of you who aren't familiar near Italy, and it has some of the oldest uh, ancient historical sites on the planet. I mean, not anywhere like Quebec Le Tepe, but in the six, 7,000 year old range, um, at least that's what they're saying. It could be easily be older. And I was invited by spirit to go there, or kind of told to go. I've been there a couple of times. There's definitely a big connection. I feel like I lived there many lifetimes and a lot of things happened and there's some pretty intense magical stories about the visit that I went there. But one of the things that was interesting is there's a place called the Hypogeum, which is this very old and ancient um, site where birth and death and the rituals of that took place. And uh, there's a sound residence, a hurt frequency within the Hypogeum that's incredibly powerful. And although I've been channeling for a very long time, it's very rare for me to see things. And I saw Merlin in the Hypogeum in the sense that tiny, 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 tiny minuscule dots all started to vibrate very fast and come together until it formed the image of Merlin with the hat and the robe and the beard and he was literally in the hypogeum and peered to me which makes sense him being in a cave because it's a cave-like setting um and the energy came in and he said would you work with me will you be my apprentice will you go on a magical journey with me and he definitely is ignited and turned on something this is the last code that we were just working with and it was pretty expansive um it moved around a lot but it was very powerful and he's very present in aligning us with synchronicity with the lines of magic and uh so is the ladybug magic and so both of these um cards are representing and helping us reconnect with that magic through the light codes um as it all weaves together and uh, what i recognized in malta was that I had lived there during um, 
I believe during Atlantis, even though it may not line up geographically, and that I was a high priestess working at the time, I have flashes of these memories and um, something happened that was very devastating. And I had carried with it a ton of uh, regret from that moment. It's almost as if I wasn't able to save a lot of people or I wasn't able to do something that would have saved lives. And so when I went back there, there was this enormous clearing that happened in the um, catacombs there. And it's a story about uh, my sister channeling to me that when I that I needed to go to Malta to see to look into the eyes of the people that they carried certain codes in their eyes and I would receive certain frequencies that would awaken something that would help my work in the future. And at the time, I wasn't doing the light codes, and that I would find myself in a place where I, a red vine would appear, and when the red vine appeared, that I might would be afraid, but that I had to go and past my fear. And so I went to Malta with my sister and my daughter, who at the time was like eight or nine, she was little, and we were having a wonderful time and all kinds of magic was happening. And then we were in the catacombs and she ran over to me and she said, mom, you have to come this way, come this way. And I said, okay. And I held her little hand and she brought me to this place where there was a velvet red rope that you're not supposed to go, you know, in a museum type setting. And um, she said, no, mom, we have to go. And she does not like to break rules. My daughter, trust me. <laughs> I was like, hmm, this must be important. So we go underneath and I follow her and she brings me into this corridor and these, these steps. And she goes, mommy, you're supposed to go there. And she didn't know anything about the red vine or the, what I was anything. And I look up and there it is, the red vine and it's hanging in the cave. And there's, I have this feeling of overwhelm and uh, there's all this dust and spider webs and stuff. And I just had this need to climb up into this space that was very tight. And there was dust all over me. And it was a mess. <laughs> the red vine was like pulling to me. And I went in there and I just started to sob and cry and scream like in the most intense way. Um and I had all these flashes and memories of things, something that happened. And I kind of just begged for forgiveness. And in that moment, there was this huge release and an opening that took place in my DNA and my energetic field that I know was part of bringing the light codes to the planet. Um, and, and that's what's so important with the light codes is that we need to go in, whether it's to our past lives or current life, and work through and release any old energies or traumas that are impeding us from opening up the space that is needed for the light to come in. And that's why when we work with the codes, we start with like the earth and then the star, and we keep coming in like this. And then, and next week, we're starting with Casey to really delve into more deep family trauma relationships, like real earthly stuff, because we've got to clear that out in order to have that space for this light to come in. And so to me, the Merlin energy here in the Hypogeum in Malta was that I had those two juxtaposition experiences, right? The one of deep cathartic release from sorrow and pain, and then the magical experience of Merlin appearing in a cave. <laughs> it couldn't be too different, but yet they have to keep building together, so. All right, let's see what else we have. Oh, wow, look at this. Now, Debashree, is this, are the frame of people's pictures covering this? Because I don't know how to, or can you see the eggs on the right with your notes? Mm, you can move the frame though. I mean, okay. I, I think we can all move that frame as I do that. Oh, people can move their own frame. Okay. So tell us about this. I wanted to show you guys how Debashree makes the uh, cards. This is a perfect example. Um, so I think all these things are coming from, obviously, either conversations that we've had or transmissions, of course. And at this time, we were, I remember talking to you about how you wanted to build what you called at the time, the womb grid. Yeah, I and, still want to build the womb grid. <laughs> sorry? I still want to build that womb grid. Yeah, but that's why we have the eggs, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then 
before we knew it there were there were you know all these eggs that had to go to all these places that i was traveling to and so initially there was a this was a little before i received the magic egg and um so this is where it started i guess and then the idea was that every place that i would travel to or you would travel to and you you been doing this for 30 odd years before i started <laughs> so that's a lot of x i'm sure <laughs> um but so each of these were uh set out connecting to different energies everywhere i went so one of them was the kali and so you can see the the kali is actually at the at the center like the the zero point in inside the drawing and it's also the uni it's the creational so when we did the creation code um we went into that dark void right mm -hmm. and i think that is where the womb grid really came through for the first time if i remember correctly that was the creation of the grid in in some sense and that was also the time that i was in oroville which is uh the perfect example of a new earth manifestation on the planet right it's it's literally called the the new dawn the the city of the new dawn and i was i was there practicing some adobe building so building with earth and so it was just such a perfect fit that we then decided i remember talking to you and then we decided at that point that we should really work towards you know manifesting this vision of these these nodes or uh, you know birth points of of new earth so in some sense that connects the womb grid to these new portals that you can open exactly which we and we keep opening them on each activation and then we're going to do something really special with the whole <clears throat> right so yeah and our and one more thing is that the the misbaha that you see you see this in in multiple cards this was the the rosary with the 33 beads when oh, we had 33 yeah. keys yeah and i have that on my altar and you got that in dubai right yeah yeah which is a whole nother crazy story it's, yeah <laughs> i was channeling the christ consciousness code um and yeshua came in and it was all about being in the desert and next thing i know devishree's in the desert <laughs> doing artwork that matches the code because she's in dubai in the desert it's just crazy it's just like every every day but he did he did spend 40 days in the desert right right exactly yeah and then he must have he that's how he probably reached i guess jerusalem and whatever the geography is but it's 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 rife with with significance but you also see the um the kind of abandoned feminine energy in the uae because it's so um, the women are still you know in oppressed and, and so that that came through as well yeah it's incredible all right let's see what else we have hold on uh why is it doing that <laughs> Huh, my computer is just stuck. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, so we wanted to, I want to show another example of how the art comes together that Debbie does these drawings and then they interlay on top of one another to build uh the cards themselves. And this is the violet flame light cloud with Saint Germain. Um, is there something you want to share more about that? This was the first time you you spoke to me about the accelerator chair. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and so I couldn't sleep that night. I was like, okay, we need to draw this accelerator chair. <laughs> I wonder what it looks like. So that was that was my version of the accelerator chair. I love it. And it has the Maltese cross on it, which follows yeah. up from Saint from Merlin, who is Saint Germain's like they're the same oversoul. I mean, think about it, right? That's true. Yeah. That's incredible. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, this is the Lion Gate. You guys know. <laughs> so this is the beautiful rendition of um, Debbie Shree's White Lion for the Lion Gate, which is an inside of the Oracle Deck box, which when you first open it, which is perfect. 
And as we know, we connected with the Syrian elders through this. And right before the Lion Gate this year in 2023, I was like, well, I'm going to do the Lion Gate. It would be great to see some white lions. <laughs> so Debra Cherie happened from India to tell me there was a place an hour and a half from my house where there was a white lion. And I went to see it and the white lion came right up to me. It was unbelievable and made eye contact and hung out with me and definitely transferred some type of energy and codes, which was pretty magical, I gotta say. All right. So this is the sacred site. So I want to get in and show you guys all the places that the, the codes have gone to to date. Um, this is a representation. This is Mount Shasta. Um, and this is, go ahead, Debra, do you have anything you want to share about this? I know this particular piece you have brought with you everywhere. And I think Mateus mentions this drawing in the video, right? Yeah, this is the drawing I showed him when, when I met him. Um, because we were talking about the egg. And then also, to me, there is, there is an entire... Um, there is a place inside each of these these eggs, right? Here's the egg, like a, a piece of new earth, yeah. So and and uh, every time we journey into Telos or or you go into the inner earth, you have all these constructions. Or even if you go into the portals above, they seem to have these discs and these platforms, and the whole thing is so constructivist. And so this is the 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 geometry again. It has the pentahexa codes and a lot of other geometry. I mean, it's layered with all the geometric symbols. So you have the flower of life and you have the pentahexa key. And there is the, of course, the spiral. And so it's kind of this um, symbol with many symbols that's embedded in a lot of the, uh, the, the drawings for the, for the light codes. Yeah, it's and just to me, it's kind of like a signifier. You don't, realize, you don't realize it when you're working, it's looking at it until you start to delve in how much is encrypted in it. Yeah. Um, do you remember when we had the egg in the star seed class where we went into Telos and the egg opened and the light codes came out and embedded themselves on our skin or something? That was the crazy one. Um, this is somewhat about this reminds me of this. All right, hold on. I want to uh, show you guys. Can you guys see this video here of Mateus? Everybody can see it. Let me know if you can hear it. He's going to talk about meeting Devishri in the Arctic. And then I want to show you all the places that cards have been and talk about the egg. Excalibur is actually the cross. Yeah. But you have to take it out and release this, the pain. Um, so, so I went back to the North Pole again last year um, to sow the 24 runes um, of the Yggdrasil tree, which is the Norse tradition. Mm -hmm. So I put them in a circle around the island of Svalbard. Mm -hmm. I went on a boat for 11 days, I think. Um, this last summer, right? You sent yeah. the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You sent and, the pictures of it. Yes. And um I didn't know about the 24. Yeah. So you know, 24 is the actual musical scale. Mm -hmm. There's 24 notes in a quarter tone scale. Uh -huh. And each one of those notes is representing also in their proportions the height over the base of each of the pyramids. Uh they're musical notes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like Todd said, it's an instrument. It's an instrument. It's a musical instrument. If you know how to play it, you can travel through time. <laughs> and, and 24 is the prime number pattern as well. That's why next year is so important. 2024 is the big year. Yeah. <laughs> this is the big year when I've, I've, I've been seeing that too and feeling it. It's going to be a mass awakening. Yeah. Yeah. And so a lot of things are being asked to do before that. And a mass calamity at the same time. Oh, yeah, because is is At the one moment, it'll be mass awakening and beautiful realization and ascension. And the other, it will be absolute disaster. Yeah, because everything breaks. All the, all the, the ancient patterns, everything that got stuck. It's like, you know, when you, when you have stuck something inside of you for a long time 
And finally, it is released. We call it disease. So diseases or conflicts that we have in our lives are not the problem. The problem is that you have been stuck in that within you for a long time. And instead of releasing it properly and finding the balance of it, um, you, you release it all at the same moment. And that's what we call disease, illness. So that's why a lot of people will feel relieved because, oh, now... I can finally see the system and I can know what to do and other people will feel sick because of that. So the same process will heal many people in instantaneously and uh, will get sick many other people. Yeah. We're almost same there, guys. Hold so on. So you're going around the island with 24. We so I went up to the runes. Yeah. So I went there and I started to, to connect all that. And, um, and I was put in the seeds of a tree. So the, the information was there are 24 trees around the world that are holy trees that people use to connect with God. So if you put them all together with the right honey of the right bee in the right pattern with the right song, and you will have alchemy to awaken human DNA. So they said that on the ice, on the ice sheet of the North Pole. And uh, and they said, you have put the seeds. Now you need the egg. And I said, I don't have any egg. Here's the egg. And uh, how can I find the egg? So I finished my trip. I was sitting on a bar waiting for my taxi to take me to the airport. Um. And this Indian woman comes to me and said, are you Matthias? I said, yeah. And I am just about to go to the port to take the same boat that you took to go there. But my task is this. And she pulls up an egg, <laughs> a crystal egg, and said, what should I do? <laughs> I was like, that was the other part of the task. But a feminine energy has to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, which was to put the egg and activate the information of the feminine in the North Pole. So it all combines and get together. And, uh, and she said, I, I draw this image and she showed me the paper where she draw it for years. And on it, there was this shape, this structure of an egg that was like this, um, golden and silver. And I said, I saw that, and uh, I. This is one of the things that we have to build for the future. And she said, um, "Well, I'm an architect." And she said, "Well, so, so we have to find a place where to do it." And I said, "Oh uh, uh, no!" She she said, "I have a I have a connection with with a being that tells me these numbers, but I don't know where." So the codes that she had there written were exactly the parallel latitude of Birtawil. <laughs> and Birtawil is a philosopher's stone, yeah. the triangle. Mm -hmm. So all of that led me there and it said, follow, follow the X now. Follow. So, Devishri, you want to share with us your encounter with him? What happened? So just to back up real quick, guys, I have been carrying an egg. It looks like this. I have three in total. Two are gone. One's in Mount Shasta in the middle of the water there uh, in the lake. And the other one, Devishri, dropped on the summer solstice um, in the Arctic. But the egg had been carried for many, many years to many sacred places and was coded with the, with the light codes. And then I mailed it to India, to Devishri, and then... Go ahead, you share from there. Um, so just before I left, we had a couple of conversations where we were also expecting another half to the story. Do you remember the crystals that were supposed to fertilize the egg? Oh, right. And we didn't and, get it. We were going to yeah, and her. And you, yeah, so we didn't, we thought that, you thought that it was going to come to us from Damanhar and 
Um, and then you specifically mentioned that there's going to be a man that you're going to meet somewhere. And it was, it was all enlisted, but we didn't get any crystals that were supposed to go with the egg. Right. I remember. Just like Matthias, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I was leaving and I'm like, Kelly, so now there's, the crystals haven't arrived right <laughs> exactly said, yeah just go ahead with you know we'll see what happens so we also had the same story and then we and I met with Matthias the day before I was headed out for my expedition and uh, I told him all about your work and I told him about how you've carried this egg to uh, all these places for all these years and then I did I did uh, mention the transmission that you brought in for the 1212 activation. Mm. And I'm amazed that he remembers, like really amazed. And those were the codes that he's saying is connected. Those, with yeah, those were the codes. And I'm amazed that he remembers the codes because I, I mean, they're not in that drawing, but he, he's, he's probably plugged in and he's figured it out, which right. is really amazing. Amazing. And, um, and that's the, the the place, right? That special place that he has in, in his heart, south of Egypt. Yeah. Which then <clears throat> going to Egypt. And, <laughs> and then I went to Egypt, yeah. And then uh, the next day, he just caught me uh, right before I left for the port. And he said, here, I have something for you. And that, that's when he gave me those crystals. And by then, I think I was not in touch with you anymore, right? I think right, I had, you were on I the had boat. connectivity. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, let's show so, the picture of that. Yeah, yeah, so all through the, the Arctic travels, every day that I was in the north, uh, around the archipelago, I was connecting the two uh, energies, like his crystals, which were the platonics, and the egg, and, and the landscape. And so all of that was done because... Um, I had like a, f a good 15 days before the solstice before the solstice yeah and that's amazing that it for him it was with the platonics and in some ways our journey together began with that too when you think about it with Metatron's cube right that's true <laughs> yeah okay um, let me just share <clears throat> So Debbie has taken uh, the, the cards, the light codes all over the world. Um, and I want to skip for a moment. We'll come back to these, but I want to just show you. Here's the egg um, in the Arctic. Oh, with the, oh, wow. And there it is with the, um, with Metatron's cubes, with the platonic solids, right? You want to tell us what's happening here? <laughs> so this was another cryptic message for where the egg had to go. <laughs> and it did actually end up being exactly what you had mentioned to me in your message. Which was a, ch a channeled message, right? Before you left? Yeah. yeah, a channeled message for where the egg was supposed to be dropped. And it was exactly, the, the line was there. There was a pipeline. There was all of those things exactly there. I had checked with the captain and I had no way of orchestrating that. There was just absolutely no way. And it was really at the intersection of where the, the fjord and the ocean meet. And so there were two different colors of, you know, of the water. Oh, wow. And the most beautiful thing was the, the, the minute the egg was dropped, um our vessel was surrounded by over a hundred beluga whales <laughs> like i'm serious because to us it of course we were astounded but the captain was amazed because he hadn't seen so many belugas in one spot no uh, on any of his expeditions and the very next morning to the solstice um we had this huge blue whale show up right in front of the the vessel way bigger than than our vessel 
Absolutely. And that was magnificent. So that was really something else. And, and now that I recollect, you had mentioned also before I left that there was going to be a rainbow, like a bridge. Yes. And I realized this morning, Kelly, that that was that rainbow that I saw in the Arctic, the white rainbow, oh. which I saw exactly the moment again, the same day of the of the egg being dropped, which was also the rainbow that I showed to Matthias. And so when Matthias had completed his task, I had seen the, uh, the, the sun bow in the sky while I was still in Longibian. So there were all these signs, right? Um, phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, I really and then we were being, you know, the whales were coming to say, yeah, good work. You did it. You know, like, <laughs> it's incredible. So, yeah, that's the story of a, a mini, mini story of the egg, because of course, before it got here to meet with Debbie and to meet with Mateus and for her to take it in the out into the waters in the Arctic, which is just phenomenal. Um, it had traveled all over the world. And one of the places that it really received a lot of codes um, was in, in Mount Shasta as well. All right, let's back up because there's all these incredible places that the cards um, have been. So here they are in Dubai. Is there anything this, you want to yeah, share? Yeah, this was this was connecting us to uh, Christ consciousness, and then subsequently the resurrection. Because I think you had some channelings that also took us to the desert, and it was really crazy. Like you mentioned earlier, that I I called you and I said, "Listen, I'm in the desert right now," <laughs> and. Um um it was now that you think about it it's so significant because you you have the scenes who carried the dead sea scrolls and those those documents had well in in some sense the real essence of christianity right without the religious kind of um yeah structure to them and they were hidden and they had to be you know and there was all this thing with the desert and I, I just ended up at these fossilized dunes that were over a, uh, a good three million years old somewhere in the middle of a desert outside of Abu Dhabi and that's where I was when you did your final activation which is just so mind-boggling to me because we were in the midst of the Christ consciousness code. And as we're going through the codes, I never know where they're going to take us, you know, whether it's the Roslyn chapel or they're going to take us to some cave somewhere, but we were taken to the desert. And um, there's something that continues to keep connecting and connecting. And now it says it was 12, 12, uh, 2022. Wow. Is that right? Yeah. When we were doing the crate you're right no, we were we were doing the christ consciousness uh code right at the end of december i believe and we on 12 12 was the ocean transmission with the codes oh right which was an amazing yeah. one and, and yeah go ahead i think that's how i remember it and sometimes people say to me, well, are there 33 codes that I downloaded, yet there's 55 cards? And that's because that's a, a perfect example with the Christ Consciousness light code. We have another card that goes with it, which is the resurrection to expand on it. So, yeah. And then the 1212 activation was where those number codes came in that you shared with Matthias that he talks about leads to the building of the new earth in Egypt, which ultimately is the goal um, that Debashree and I are working toward is to build an actual physical representation or place like Arville or Dom and her, these different places that represents the new earth. Okay. Now, where are the cards here? <laughs> this, this I think was during the creation code. Uh -huh. um, and this was where you took us for the first time into the void. The, the, the I black remember black. we were journeying through the darkness, right? Mm -hmm. And ironically, I was in a forest in Maharashtra uh, at 
a very remote shrine that is dedicated to the Kali. And you have to really, uh, and for the Kali, we do her prayers after 2 a.m. And so you go into this forest, which is, it's, you can't even see the, you, you can't even see your own palm. It's that dark. And you have to cross the river and you have to go through this dark forest. And it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty intimidating if you haven't done it before. And I took the cards there and we did a little ceremony with them in the dark. And you were saying that there were snakes there and it was- Yeah, there were snakes. Yeah, there's there's snakes there. Yeah. So you just have to be really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it was really that Kali energy. And that was the first time that I was introduced to Kali. I don't know if I have Kali's card with me here. Um, here's Kali. And uh, one of the most powerful goddesses I've ever connected to. And without Deborah Shri, I wouldn't have tuned into to Kali's energy, but wow. So that's amazing. All right. And that's how she that, that's how she appeared um in the in the meditation as this as an orb almost and not like the the you know the figurine that we see usually. Right, like an orb of light. Yeah. Almost like the zero point. Amazing. All right. And what about oh here? Yeah, share about Auroville and what, what it's like there and everything. So uh, once again, this was so synchronic because I think this I was in Auroville for the final activation of the creation code. <laughs> unbelievable. And it's unbelievable because that's I was working with the earth. We were working on the new earth. I mean, that's when we started talking. I remember that conversation. I was on the roof in the middle of the night. And we were talking about New Earth. And yeah. um, Auroville is, is just this really special place. Um, uh, there is at the heart of Auroville is a, a place called the Mother's Temple, which is a spaceship uh, for all practical purposes. And, <laughs> and <laughs> it's exactly how you had once described uh, telos and the structures with the golden discs. And, and, and so the Matri Mandir is exactly that. It's like this sphere and it's covered in these sun discs, like gold discs. And there is a spiral, a uh, uh, helicoid staircase inside and a little sphere of uh, crystal in the center, which catches uh, the sun. Oh, it's stunning. It's, yeah. It's and it's so completely white. So it's like being inside the egg in some <laughs> sense. And oh, it's it's very special. It's this whole place that's built for artists and and um, people who are exploring their consciousness and just really exactly what we need more of. And for those of you who don't know about it, you can see the name of it here, Auroville, and it's in India if you want to go to visit it. Oh, and then Devishri went to base camp, Mount Everest. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, I I was I was made to do this because you sent me the egg. So up until that egg came to Oh, me, the egg had to go to Mount Everest before it, it could yeah, go so to the egg egg had, Yeah, the egg had <laughs> planned. And there was no mention of Mount Everest at that at that point in, in time. And I think it was just 10 days after you mailed the egg to me <laughs> that I had the, uh, the, I signed up for the base camp trek. And I don't really trek. And it was really, it was not easy <laughs> to was, do this. Yeah, what an accomplishment, my God. But other uh, what you saw on the way up, who showed up for you, a tiny little. That was insane. I mean, up there um, where there's nothing growing, right? Because now you're already at an altitude where nothing grows. Right. And there's snow and and whatever. And I see a ladybug. <laughs> and that was an exceptionally hard day. Like I was ready to give up. I, I, I didn't know how I could continue this because it was getting a little challenging with the air and, and all of that. But I saw this ladybug and that was insane. Once was, again, I had no network and no way to, to reach you and show you this crazy magic. But um, I think that you did I had it. help. <laughs> I had help. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, and here you are coming home from Mount Everest in the helicopter. Yeah, this was on, yeah, after the uh, half of the descent, we had to come back because a couple of people with us got really badly sick. Yeah. And so while I was flying over um, the mountains, I had a friend hold up the drawing. And that's the the drawing with um, the Everest and Mount Shasta and multiple places. So the, the thing with the drawings is they're, um, they have over a hundred layers, which Kelly, even you don't know about. <laughs> I know this. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's all sorts of things that go into the drawing. So as 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 a practice, I don't delete anything. I just bury them in the drawing because for some reason they wanted to be there for for a bit. So there's, <laughs> and I don't I don't delete it really are embedded and encrypted with the magic like there's so much in it energetically and vibrationally for all of us as the codes and is this the same drawing that you showed Mateus? is this this the is one? the exact same yeah i've, I've printed it uh, on a large uh, scale so it travels with me everywhere <laughs> and then i make grids over it with with whatever i find wherever i go right and so this because i find that this kind of opens up things uh, it's it's just something I've been doing. So I've continued to do it. Like a portal of sorts, huh? And then you took the cards to Norway. <laughs> this was another crazy thing. So this was before reaching the Arctic. Um, I wanted to see, and I spoke to Karita about this. And she's like, are you sure you want to go to a stone circle before the Arctic? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then nobody knew how to get to this place. And the funny thing is that um, Matthias was working with the runes. I had no idea because I was already not on on social media at the time, uh, plugging in. So at this time, I think he had already started his voyage with the runes. And this is how I connected with the runes. With that the perfect sense. With, with, yeah, and then all these... Norse gods and goddesses showed up uh, who I knew very little about to be very honest and so I had to expand on that before I even reached the Arctic so Karita really helped with connecting she said before you leave you have to connect with the goddesses of Norway and she put me in touch with all these beautiful friends uh, of hers across the country and each of them just you know, had their own story to build into. And I've shared this journey with them as well. It's so amazing. So you were connecting in with that same vibration as Matthias was doing it. And ironically, I also <clears throat> then was in- You were Sweden, in Sweden. And I was in Denmark. And Sam, my husband and I were doing a scavenger <clears throat> of runes, remember? <laughs> so it all links up, right? Like you can't make this stuff up. It's amazing. All right, and here you are in the Arctic and now, and then to Iceland. This was another place you sent me to with another cryptic message, Kelly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you are a very good listener that you are willing to travel to all these places and do these things that, that Raphael recommends. <laughs> <laughs> it was already past uh, like 10 p.m. or something and I couldn't for the life of me, find this place. Like I was driving around Iceland, driving around. <laughs> and it's this really remote pool somewhere that was shut down. But once you enter that valley, it's really magic. Yeah. And that's I mean, I don't know the story. You know the story. Well, it, it's connected with Shay, which is interesting that Shay weaves in and out through this with us because um, that's my daughter. She went to Malta with me. Then she was the one that guided. Uh, she had been in Iceland for this space. And um, and then she met both Debashri and I in, um, in Dom and Her, which is coming up. So we're almost there. I know we're getting past time, but we want to keep sharing. So we'll move on to a uh, segment. <laughs> and this is, you know, the activation where Sekhmet and Kali have a really a very strong uh, uh, I mean transmission together yeah really intense that's one of my favorite light codes yeah wow. so we uh, have Sekhmet visiting Kali in India <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. 
then Devishri and I went to Barcelona together. Um, and here we are at the Sagrada Familia. Uh, it's just beautiful how it connects with the light. That was during the light language code. And look at the energy. Look at how that matches energetically. Isn't that stunning? I realized this when I was putting this slideshow together. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. And then this is in Barcelona, Merlin. It's about, we're about to start the Merlin light code and Merlin shows up. He's like this way, this way. And then we went to Dom and her. We'll do a whole program on Dom and her together, but Deb and Shri and I and Shay went to Dom and her, which is in Italy. It's a temple of the humankind and, and place the cards. It's like when you go to Dom and her, all the codes and all the work that we do comes to life. It's amazing. So here are the codes, uh, the Danyu with the water, the earth temple. We've got uh, the jaguar. I have the whole story about the jaguar that was on my bed. I won't get into that today. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at this. Yeah, we'll do a program on uh, Dom and her and the Selfika and the light language. And it's amazing. Okay, then we got to move on real quick to Egypt. Then we'll, so here, tell us what happened and how you ended up here. This is crazy. So I'm in Italy with Devishri. We're doing all this magic at Dom and her. We'll, we'll do a whole like class on that because it was so special. People in our Ascended Master program, I'm taking there, there this spring. Um, and then I was going to go with her to Egypt, but I had other things going on. I couldn't make it. I, it's, I a little bit regret it, <laughs> but tell us what happened. So this was the first night that I showed up in, in, in Cairo. And I met with a friend of Matthias's actually. And um, so he just started chatting and he went on and then he's like, okay, there is this place that I need to take you to at two in the morning. <laughs> that was like my first night in Egypt with a strange guy. And I said, okay, let's go, let's do it. And so he took me to this place, which uh, I think Matthias also referred to as a Markaba. Mm -hmm. And it's very special because I believe it's, it's, it's sealed off now to public because they there is research that goes to show that there is a, an entire tunnel system below these sites the size of new york city unbelievable and and you just have these small remnants that you know stick out but they're so powerful this whole plinth is actually the plinth of a sun temple which lies derelict today. And, and behind me is, is a pyramid that's also in disrepair with tunnels inside it, which you can see, but you can't, you can't enter because everything's falling over you. You had, so like, hmm? right. you had to climb up a crazy ladder in the middle of the night. And that's just... because this whole site is sealed. So right. it's not open to public. And so this guy shows up. I mean, he takes me to some place and then he says, okay, now we get off. And now do you see that big ladder there? We're going to climb the ladder. I said, really? <laughs> like, it's, it's a two floor ladder. Again, in in like two, at two o'clock in the morning. And then you climb down the other side and you're boom in the middle of a desert somewhere. Unreal. And then you hike across the desert <laughs> for half an hour. <laughs> looking for this that's why, Maybe that's why I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my god, it was special. All and right. so I took the cards with me and we I, I and that's where the light language came through, you know. The I think we at that we we were done with the light language transmission. Right. We had just finished the light language and we were ready to move on to Merlin. And then you had like all kinds of magical things happen where they allowed you to have alone time and like the energy just opened up for you in Egypt, right? It was for the light coats. Because <laughs> oh. uh, they were here, they, they were everywhere. And uh, it was pretty significant. So I just did this little thing, which is the Osirian spine that everyone knows of now in, in Egypt is, is aligned. Uh, the Nile is a reflection of the Milky Way galaxy. And so the spine in the sky and the spine on the, on the ground and the spine in the human body. 
and then how that coordinates the the platonic solids and so it's a journey that the initiates took and Mateus talks about it extensively and many other people have have uh, embarked on this journey but what I found unusual was every time I went to these temples instead yeah. of having to leave the quartz behind I would right. receive uh, what, what a mean? platonic like a shaped platonic shaped uh, artifact from each of these sites oh okay so you they were sharing giving to you energetically instead of you having to give to them it seems like that that's amazing i wonder so why fine. well because then you're energetically working with that it yeah. was like an exchange i mean i did have the platonic solid that i was leaving behind right but i also got so if I left the uh, hexahedron, I would get a cube shaped rock or something crystalline from one of the, like from, from, from the grounds of Abu Simbel, for example. And that was consistent. It happened everywhere with every temple. Exactly. That's amazing. Well, that's probably. And I have those pieces, so I'll send them to you. <laughs> and then we, <laughs> we can embed them with the light and they'll be asked to go somewhere else it's all weaving together <laughs> right that's, true. Wow. that's the beautiful birth house that we just passed and of course here so because this is Edfu and this is the solar plexus you see um, the arc of the covenant so all these boxes including the sarcophagus were all just carrying these devices and you and I yeah, and talked yeah. about that in length and we'll have to do a whole yeah. class on that. Then it's a whole thing, yeah. It's a whole thing that really can travel down a whole amazing journey. Uh, and then our dear segment, <laughs> there you are with segment, with the segment light code. Yeah, so this, she came, I mean, she came through as a remarkable dream the night before I was to visit the temple of Karnak. And then as soon as I entered, he just, he said, okay, I'm going to give you uh, 20 minutes alone. It's the same thing as the sarcophagus in the king's chamber. He emptied the entire king's chamber. And then he, then he came in again and he removed the barrier between me and the, and the artifact, because you're not supposed to touch the statue technically. Wow. And he just comes in on his own and he he removes the barrier out. He just knew. And, and then he, and he leads me to the statue and he says, okay, you know, whatever. And then he leaves again. <laughs> so it was really funny. And I was, and he told me initially very strictly, no photographs, no touching, no moving, no nothing. And then he reversed all of that. So that was cool. And there it is. And this was very... This is, a, it's a, it's a remarkable energy. I can feel it just sitting here with I mean, you. You can't, I, you can't discuss. I mean, you can't really. No. You I have no way to talk about it. Amazing. And this is Dandara. You go into all those crypts and you see all these remarkable um things on the wall and then they come back to you right they they came back to me as drawings uh in dream time and it's as if they're explaining themselves to you and you uh, were finishing up here but you were saying and here's in Giza with the divine masculine that and I have had the same since I got back from Dom and her and we've energetically connected and like keep opening up with the light codes our for you, you were saying your dreams are just so much more intense, the synchronicity, the magic, everything like boom, boom, boom. And the same for me, having all these visions and it's really happening. Yeah. I mean, the kind of dreams and the, it was funny how being in Egypt, we were also in the Merlin code. <laughs> oh, that's right. It was like a, it was like a part-time thing, right? You were doing <laughs> Egypt one night and then with more than the other night. <laughs> it was, it was oh. very busy. <laughs> the nights were very busy in Egypt. It was beautiful. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. 
Well, thank you, Devashri, from the bottom of my heart. This is her all the triumph, all the journeys, all the artwork, all the amazing things that we now have in the 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 55 cards that we can carry around with us and work with and the codes. And as you guys know, we've done 18 codes uh, so far, and we're going to take uh, this month, we're going to really delve into that deep clearing, like that clearing I did in Malta uh, to open up space so that when we move into these next vibrations, we can assimilate them so that everybody's ready because here we go for another um, another batch of codes. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, we went past time, but I really appreciate everybody's time. So grateful to Debashri and uh, we will do this again. Let us know if you enjoy the storytelling and the delving behind the scenes into the deeper understanding of what we're all doing together. Um, if that's important to you, I'd love to hear that as we're going to perhaps do something like once a month or once a week and go into this deeper storytelling because I think it's good to have the the background of what what we're doing with the work together. All right, so I love you all. Thank you so much. Does anybody have anything they want to um, add here? Or oh, I haven't been looking at the messages. There's so many. Oh my. <laughs> um. Perfect. Oh, good. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. All right. Well, we love you guys. I guess we'll sign off in love, love, love. And I'll see everybody tomorrow morning. If you're in the membership in the light codes, we start at 9 a.m. I'll be there. And um, please think about joining us and playing with the cards and being involved in our journey. It's it's a beautiful community. Love you guys. Mwah. You can unmute and say love, love if you want. <laughs> love, love.